Welcome back. There's excitement in the room. And there'll be more excitement when I call up this next person to talk about the ambassador program. Please help me welcome Dee Marie Smith. Here's another one. Here's another one. I'm thinking, wow, look at all the club ambassadors. 
In conclusion, I expect to see everyone who's not part of the leadership submitting me a form, the trio leadership. <laughs> Not that we don't want them to receive, but they've been there. We want to recognize the other members. I want to see you all walk in the red carpet. That concludes my Club Ambassador Program speech. Yay! something that was way over your head? Have you ever done something really stupid? <laughs> oh, I have. I was a sophomore in college, and I was in a fraternity. I was forcibly volunteered by my philanthropy chair to represent my fraternity house that night in a charity date auction hosted by a local sorority. Immediately, I thought, why not? I'm just the man for the job. <laughs> I immediately started having images in my head of what I thought the night would be like. You know those overly optimistic images you have in your head right before doing something really, really stupid? <laughs> <laughs> those guys. I imagine myself strutting out on stage. Big, bright lights shining in my face. The light rays being absorbed by my leather jacket and tight leather pants. <laughs> Ones I didn't actually own at the time, but they just kind of fit in well with the image. <laughs> I would strut on stage like a rock star, and girls would be in the front row throwing dollar bills and fainting, and then the bidding would start. And girls would be outbidding each other one at a time. They were like a pride of lionesses fighting over a T-bone stick. <laughs> As the bidding would wind down, girls would be outbidding each other $100 at a time just for a date with me. I was cool. I was John Travolta in Greece. I was Tom Cruise in Top Gun. I was handsome. I was unstoppable. I was irresistible. <laughs> I was soon to realize I was in way <laughs> I show up at the bar that's hosting the event. My buddies take a seat. I show up wearing the best outfit my <laughs> Sally Mae budget could afford. Nice button down, dark blue jeans. Too bad I couldn't afford any leather, I thought. <laughs> I show up at the desk with the sorority girls taking entries. They said it'll be number 12, third from the last. I thought, all right, ladies, hold your money. I'm part of the grand finale tonight. <laughs> As the bar starts filling up with people, some announcements are made, and the night gets underway. The music starts 
pulsating. <laughs> the lights start crisscrossing on stage. The audience level increases. <sighs> the first contestant comes out on stage. Now, while all this is happening in my head, I'm starting to have different images than those <laughs> I had before. I'm starting to feel nervous. My heart is beating faster. My hands are sweaty and starting to shake a little bit. I look out in the audience, but the big bright lights are in my face, so I couldn't really see, but I'm looking for that row of you know, beautiful college girls, the ones with the dollar bills in their hands, ready to <laughs> bid on me, but I'm not seeing them, and I start to think that maybe tonight will end up a little bit differently than I first thought. Just then, my thoughts broke to the auctioneer. da 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 So, contestant number one for $100. The first contestant leaves the stage. The next few contestants go about the same way, but I start to feel more and more nervous, heart beating faster, hands visibly shaking by this point. So, contestant number three, $50. Bids start to decrease, interest starts to wane. I soon find out that college girls don't have as much money as I first thought. <laughs> <laughs> It's around contestant number 10 that I truly start to feel desperate. See, contestant number 10 wasn't one guy. Oh no. <clears throat> contestant number 10 was two guys. They both come up on stage. No bids. The audience looks confused. The auctioneer had never seen this before. He goes to the back of the stage, finds a third guy, brings him up on stage <laughs> with the other two. Three guys. No the auctioneer then runs to the back of the stage, this time pulls out a t-shirt, <laughs> throws it on stage with the other three. Finally, sold. Contestant number 10, three guys, one t-shirt, $15. <laughs> <laughs> I stood there horrified. I wanted to run. Contestant number 11 doesn't sell at all. Then finally, <laughs> contestant number 12, come on down. My whole body was shaking by this point. I wanted to run, but somehow I'm on autopilot and I make my way to stage. I look out in the audience, but the lights are brighter and hotter than they've been all night. So I look down instead. I'm nervous. My hands are in my pockets. Sweat is going from my brow down to my toes. The bidding starts. No bits. Time stood still. I felt like I was there for a whole year by this point. <laughs> I figured that the auctioneer was going to have to start throwing t-shirts on me. To get me to <laughs> so awkward, right? Probably a whole box by this point. <laughs> but then, like a halo of light in the distance. $25. $25? My confidence starting to race. <laughs> the image of the lioness is fighting over the tea ball stick in the back of my head. I figure all I need is a couple more girls to bet on me and then I'll be over 100 bucks and that's pretty respectable given the last few. But then, <laughs> sold. Contestant number 12 for $25. The auctioneer looks out into the audience to see who bought me. I'm thinking, is she gorgeous? Is she the girl of my dreams? Is she... My best friend, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever done something that was way over your head? <laughs> Have you ever wondered how much a best friend is really worth? Bidding starts at $25. <laughs>
Steve Brood. Ocean of Emotion. Ocean of Emotion, Steve Brood. Madam Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters and honored guests, how many of you remember sophomore year in high school? Me too. My English teacher was Mrs. Johnson. She was teaching us literary symbolism using Arthur Miller's play, Death of a Salesman. The lead character, Willie Loman, was a mediocre salesman with family problems who cheated on his wife and then died. Class, who can tell me the literary symbolism of the name Willie Loman? I raised my hand. Yes, Stephen? Willie Lowman. Lowman on the totem pole. He's a loser. <laughs> Very good, Stephen. My best friend, Big Tom, leaned over and whispered, good one. Stephen, how would you like to give a speech on this play in two weeks? Uh, yes, Mrs. Johnson. Oh, no, I was petrified of public speaking. Big Tom leaned over and whispered, who's the loser? Now, <laughs> those two weeks inched by. My only preparation was worrying about how I would fail. The big day came. I went to class. I had to wait. My name was called. I slouched up to the front of the class, eyes on the floor. I looked up. Everybody was staring at me. I was drowning in an ocean of emotion. And baby, it wasn't the sea of love. <laughs> oh, I panicked. I froze. I couldn't get a word out, and I went back to my seat and sat down. Somehow I survived that nearly fatal embarrassment. It motivated me to go out and become a lawyer. And I did. I wanted to overcome my fear of public speaking. I did do public speaking, but I couldn't overcome the fear. After many years, I signed up for a legal education course in public speaking. I paid hundreds of dollars, and the best single piece of advice they gave me was, join Toastmasters. <laughs> <laughs> Much cheaper. <laughs> Table topics. I dipped my little toe in the ocean of emotion. Not bad. Want to do a contest? Sure. I signed up for the contest. No opponent at area. This is easy. <laughs> on the division. Bigger crowd. I introduced myself to the other contestants. Hi, I'm Steve Frew. Hi, hi. Hi, I'm Prez Vasilev. <laughs> oh. Oh. I wasn't impressed. <laughs> Funny accent. <laughs> I drew number five, but Prez drew number three. So I was waiting in the isolation room when thunderous laughter and applause broke out. I knew right then Prez had won. And of course, he went on to be world champion of public speaking. The next year, Bill asked me if I'd like to try the international speech contest. I said, sure. But oh no, at the club level, my opponent was Mandy Shaw. She blew me away. I was out. But Bill said, well, there's another club who needs a contestant. So I joined successfully speaking. On to area, no opponent. This is easy. <laughs> On to division. But that morning, I was really nervous. I hadn't slept all night. I couldn't eat breakfast. I sweated through my clothes all day. Oh, I was so nervous when I got to the contest. There was a young lady two positions ahead of me. The contest started. She got two minutes into her speech, and she pulled a sophomore Steve Frew. She froze. The crowd was dead quiet. Over a minute, I was praying, please, God, don't let that happen to me. <laughs> and by the way, please help her. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess he did. And she was a Toastmaster. She snapped out of it. She finished with a flourish. I thought, wow, if she can do that, I can do OK. And I did. I got up. I did OK. I lost. But I came in second. And the next day, the winner said she couldn't go to district. She had a conflict. So. Off I went to district without ever having won a contest. <laughs> <laughs> now the ocean of emotion rose up within me. I thought, oh, I must get control over these emotions. But how, how? Ocean, water, faucet. 
My condo building has 50 flights of stairs. I went up 50 flights working that imaginary faucet to control that ocean, and down the 50 flights and out of the basement to practice my speech, and up and down and up and down. The big day came. I got to the contest. I woke up. I had actually slept. <laughs> I ate breakfast. I went to the contest. I performed, and I did better than I'd done in practice. But I lost. <laughs> Came in tied for fourth out of eight. But still, I had won my internal battle with myself to get control. How did Toastmasters give me that ability? Let's go back to sophomore English. Willie Loman is dying. His wife steps up to give her big speech, a famous speech. She says, in essence, my husband's not a successful man, but he's a good man who's lived a valuable life. Attention, attention must be paid to such a man. And Toastmasters, in this defined speaking area, attention is paid. The speaker pays attention to the audience. The audience pays attention to the speaker. There's communication. As a sophomore, I only paid attention to my own fear. Willie Loman only paid attention to his own problems. So as Toastmasters, why don't we go back and rewrite that play, Death of a Salesman? <laughs> we'll call it Life of a Salesman. <laughs> why look, there's a new guest coming in. It's, it's Willie Loman. But he's changed his name to Willie Highman. <laughs> he wants to join Toastmasters. Would you join me in welcoming Willie by saying, welcome Willie, come on in. Attention will be paid. Would you do that with me on one, two, three? One, two, three. Welcome, welcome Willie, Willie, come on, on in. Attention, attention, will, will, be attention paid. will be paid. Thank you, Madam Toastmaster.
Madam Toastmaster, all the ballots have been collected. All the ballots are being collected. We are going to get to know some people better. Come on up, evaluation contestants, in the order that you spoke. Her and they go around with fake snakes and they go, ah, oh, and she runs away. But I tell her, I'm not afraid of anything. But the other day, a spider bit me, and I'm like, oh, maybe I should be afraid of <laughs> <laughs> Because she's really hurt. <laughs> but uh, other than that, I'm really, I feel I'm not afraid of anything. That's so awesome. <laughs> Successfully speaking, and I also belong to Loop Trustmasters. How long have you been in Trustmasters? Three and a half years. Okay. And your educational designation? I have a CC and an ACP. Awesome, awesome. Kind of heard my question, but do you have a secret fact that nobody in the room knows that you'd like to share with us? I do. Okay. When I was five years old, my brother convinced me that we should attempt to fly by jumping out the window of a house, and I still have the scars to prove. <laughs> and you still listen to your brother? Uh, Not so much. <laughs> <laughs> well, Steve, you participated in two contests, the humorous and the evaluation. What made you do that? I know you told us a little bit about that in your speech, but why did you want to do both? Bill Morrill is to blame. <laughs> He's to blame for a lot of things. <laughs> yes, he's an awesome mentor. And by the way, Bill, let me recognize Bill at this point in time, if it's okay with you, Steve. Bill is our area director for C25. Let's give him a hand. Two weeks. Mm -hmm. I haven't trained a day. <laughs> 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 so, 
but I am going to show up anyway <laughs> to see how far I can go. <laughs> then I can get on the train back home. <laughs> well, maybe you can be like Pablo and not be afraid of anything. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do that marathon in two weeks. Well, thank you so much, Jean, for your participation. <coughs> Toastmasters tonight. I've been a member of Toastmasters since October 2011, so it's coming up on four years. My educational uh, level is DTM. My secret fact. I had plenty of time to think about that. <laughs> so there's good speaking technique that answers the question that the audience is thinking. And one of the questions you might be thinking is, what's that tough guy look thing on his arm there like? Is that a macho thing? Now you might have been thinking about that, I'm not sure, but even if you weren't, I have the secret answer. I was watching a lot of tennis on television and seeing how the champions volley the ball. And I went out and did it, but I didn't have a champion wrist. <laughs> Tennis injury. That's, that's the secret. It's not my tough guy. So you didn't listen when they said, don't try this at home. Yeah, exactly. Well, thank you so much, Ken. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. entertained us tonight and did an awesome job. As well as 
was our functionary, some whose name will remain anonymous, and all those who helped out to make this a successful night. As well as Luke Trustmasters, whose facility is hosting this tonight. Thank you. <laughs> to hand out the awards, I want to bring up our district trio to assist me. All right. Evaluation contest. Finishing in second place, Yang Mane. <laughs> I might also add that there was one disqualification. Finishing in first place. And representing the Central North Division at the Ball Conference, number seven, Ken Brzezinski. <laughs> Second place, <coughs> David Kittle. contest for Central North and will go on to represent this division at the District Fall Conference November 7th, Steve Fruit. that have not submitted their membership renewal dues, please contact your club treasurer. With that said, our contest is now over. <laughs>